Hi everyone, um, my name is Bree, and thanks so much for coming to my seminar. I hope I'm live right now, um, but I'm going to dive right on into it. Let me figure out how to get this all set up. Oh. Hmm. Give me one second, everyone. All right, I'm pretty sure you probably can see my screen but I'm going to share mine. Um, hopefully you're able to see this. I don't know, but I'm going to go through, um, one second. I'm just gonna double check, you can see my screen. Okay, perfect. All right, so hi everyone again, and welcome to my seminar. My name is Brie LeBlanc, and I am here with Redleaf Student Programs. I will give you guys a little bit about background about me. Um, and as you can see, that is me. If you can't see me on the screen, here I am again. That is me in the summer. Um, so I look a little bit different right now and I'll get into that a little bit better. But since I am probably a stranger to a lot of you guys, I wanted to give a little bit of, ba a bit of background information about myself before I get into talking so that when you're swinging by the booth or you're chatting with me, um, you'll know kind of a bit more about me so you don't think I'm just a complete stranger. Um, so my name is Bree. I've been in the field for about um, 10 years working with youth and um, high school students of your age. I started back way back when with like summer day camps and having students come and do that during the summertime and doing camping and canoeing and all of that. I worked with the government. So I worked with the city of Barrie and we went, I've went everywhere in the field of, um, with the city of Barrie from swimming to fitness to childcare to everything. But when my last contract with the city ended, I was bored and I wanted to travel. So then I went on board Carnival Cruise Lines and I was the teen director on board Carnival Cruise Lines for about two years. Um, and so I got to travel the Caribbean. I got to stay in the warm weather. I got to hang out with a lot of cool teenagers and plan their programs and run their programs week after week for six months at a time. And I had a lot of fun with that. But when that was done, I knew it was time to come back to Canada where I love to be. And I started this job with Redleaf probably a little over a year ago. So Yes, that's more about me. So you can kind of gauge who you're talking to I and what I'm all about. And so now I work with Red Leaf and we are in Canada, as you know. So I decided to start out my seminar today with just some cool Canadian facts to get you started and to get you more comfortable with the idea of coming to Canada. So this is a map of our country and it has all of our provinces and territories on it. So I'm gonna start out with some facts. So the capital of Canada is Ottawa, Ontario. So if you go to Ontario here, there is Ottawa, which is right here and that's our capital. I personally am right here. And if you drive from here to Ottawa, it's about five hours. So you can just see just how big Canada is from here to there is a five hour car ride. So it's very, it's a very, very big country. So my second fact is Canada has two official languages, both English and French. Our province that is the most French speaking is Quebec. And that is right here. It's, it's a very big, very big province. Um, another fun fact that I'm going to add in right now is that um, the majority of our population lives along the coastline to the United States. So this whole bottom part 
is where the majority of our people live. So that's just a fun little fact as well. Our two national sports are hockey and lacrosse. Um, a lot of people know about hockey. Not so many people know about lacrosse. It's a sport that um, originated from First Nations people. It's kind of like the summer version of hockey. However, it is um, played with like a pole and you have like a net on the back on the end of the pole and you throw a ball from uh, player to player. So it's fun. Our next one, I kind of already mentioned, but Canada has 10 beautiful provinces and three wonderful territories. Um, ter they're called territories up here, these three, because they are just bigger in land. Um, and it's kind of like a city has more people than a town. A territory has more land than a province. So the bottom layer here is provinces and the top here is territories. And our, we celebrate Canada Day each year on July 1st since 1867, making Canada 154 years old this year. So on July 1st, we will be celebrating Canada. And my last fun fact for you today, guys, is that Canada is the second largest country by land in the world, with Russia being the biggest, which I found that like that was a cool fact and I really wanted to add it in. Um, so those are all my fun facts. So let's get into the actual seminar topics now. I wanted to paint a picture for you guys today. I wanted to paint a picture of what it would be like if you were to come and you were to study here in Canada. So we're gonna go on kind of like a little journey about living in Canada and the roadmap to what you would need and what aspects are involved when you're living in Canada. So that first topic is that, um, and then we're gonna go through the Canadian high school system and what it's all about with what your homestay accommodations would look like. Obviously I'm here with Redleaf, so I'll talk a little bit more about the programs that we offer, some benefits to that, and then we'll go over any questions that you may have. So if that sounds good, I'm gonna dive right on into it. We're gonna start off with living in Canada. So this was kind of my last slide I added in, but I think it's such a cool fact to know, but that when you come to Canada, one of the biggest things that we have here going for us is our seasons. We have such a distinct seasonal flow that it is so, so cool and unlike any, any other place that you would live. So we have four seasons. Right now we're in February. We are in the dead of winter. So up here on the top, I'm pointing to my screen. We have winter, so we have lots of snow. Um, the waters are all frozen. Here, I'll show you a picture. That's probably an accurate representation of just how much snow we have right now. Um, it's cold and it goes till about March. Um, and then we hit the spring. The spring kind of is more light colors, flowers will start to bloom, the snow will start to melt, everything is bright, it smells, it rains a lot, it gets all muddy and fun, And but the sun is coming up, the days are starting to get longer, and the flowers and trees are starting to grow back. And then when you hit the peak of June, we go into our summer weather. The sun is shining bright. We have hot, humid weather. weather. It extends into the daylight hours um, all, all the way across Canada. And then that is our summer. And that goes till about, I'd say, probably September, end of September, until when everything starts to kind of get colder again and the tree, the leaves start to fall off the trees, they all turn orange and red and yellow, and a lot of our can Canadian roads look like this picture up here. So just, if you look at those pictures up at the top, in one full year, you'll get all of these pictures, which is super cool to me. Um, and that's just kind of a summary of what it's like to live here um, in Canada weather-wise. My second point I wanted to emphasize here is the different areas of Canada that we have. Like I mentioned, Canada is huge. We have so much land that it's only natural that it's split up into different parts and different types of places to live. So our first type of place to live is urban. So this is your cities. Your cities have all the tall skyscrapers. It's busy. You have a lot of different 
people, a lot of different ty- like kinds of people, a lot of different businesses. Basically, you could go out of your place and you could probably get to a food place within a minute. You could get your makeup or you could get anything you need in probably under five minutes. It's very busy. It's very go, go, go. You have something to do all the time. And also before, none of these are better. It's all in personal preference. This is just kind of how Canada is set up and none of them are better than the other ones. Our, but So next one is suburban. So it's the suburbs. It's not as busy as the city, but it's still a city. There's less like skyscrapers, there's less apartments, more houses, but you could still probably get whatever you need to get, whether that be a mall, um, a department store, a grocery store, all within under 10 minutes. So then our third one we call rural. This is the countryside. There's more space between the houses. It's a lot of open land. Houses are typically bigger here, but there's not much option for, um, let's say, food places or like I was mentioning, the other places I was mentioning before. Um, but all have their perks, all have their benefits, all have their things that they, they're definitely different. Um, they're def- different settings and it all depends if you're more of a city person or a country person. Um, and that is, only something you would know. So like I mentioned, we do have our Canadian high school system and I'm going to explain a little bit more about the high school system to you so you get more of an idea. So here in Canada, our high school is four years long, which is from the grades nine to 12, which is typically from the ages of 14 to 17, depending on when your birthday is. Um, You could be 18 in grade 12 if you have an early birthday. Um, But for international students all over the world, regardless of which type of school that you select, it will cost you to study um, as our international department uh, does cost to study here in Canada. So let's break it down a little bit more. Um, there are three types of different high schools in Canada. So again, we have, we seem to have three different types of things. So it's a lot of me explaining the three different types. Um, the level of education that you receive though, in each of these school types is the exact same. So I'm going to go in a little bit more. This allows students to choose based on the location and activities that they enjoy the most. Basically what I mean by that is that wherever you choose to go here in Canada, whether it be public, Catholic, or um, private, which I'll explain a little bit more about in the next slide, um, all of the same, like the education and the curriculum that you're doing is the same. It's just how it's presented and the environment of the school, depending on what you're doing. Um, So that, like I mentioned, gives the opportunity for students to choose if they like to go on the basketball team. It chooses if the students would like to go on in an arts course. And um, and it chooses basically, it, it you decide basically what you want to do based on who you are as a person. So as I mentioned, let's get into the different types of high schools. Um, Public and Catholic are very similar. And I'm going to compare those two and then I'll talk a little bit more about private. So public and Catholic are both government funded. They're both open um, to the public. And I say public, but basically the difference between public and Catholic is the religious affiliation here. So in public, there's no religious affiliation, but in Catholic schools, there is a religious affiliation with Catholicism um, and religion will be a school subject. Another big difference between public and Catholic is that students in public schools are able to wear their own clothing where Catholic schools are um, do wear a, u- a school uniform. Um, and so now let's talk a little bit more about private schools. Um, they're not funded by the government, so therefore they are typically more expensive. They are based on religion or learning style. And by that, I mean, they might be Catholic schools in the private sector. So they choose to go off and branch out on their own. 
but it also might be by learning style. We have certain learning styles called Montessori or learn to play or learn through play, um, where basically uh, kids and students are learning through playing outside or whatnot. So it depends and clothing will vary based on your private school. I feel like a lot of them and majority of them do have school uniforms, but you never know. And it really, it really does depend on um, what you're looking for in the private school that you select. So with that, as I said, we are painting a picture today. You have a place to go to school. You know what the seasons are going to be like. You have went through basically what the high school system kind of does look like. Where are you going to live? I'm going to mention a couple. I'm going to focus in on one specific one um, that through research has turned, like has basically gotten the most positive um, reviews. So when you come to Canada, you can stay in a student residence. And that is cool. It's dorm style. It's very, it's very fun. You'll stay with other um, students that are doing the exact same thing as you. But the one that we are going to fo focus on right now is our host family accommodation, because it is proven that you will get a better experience if you stay here with a host family um, through just different reviews and research. So a Canadian host family stay basically will make your time more rewarding for both the student as well as the family. So let me explain a little bit more about that. So some of the benefits of this, you'll get placed with an individual host family who has asked to host an international student. So your first thing is that they've asked and they've reached out and they want to host you. They want to have you in their house. So you'll get a more authentic experience. These people have been background checked. They are safe families. They are lovely families and they are wanting to give you the most authentic experience. They have probably lived in Canada for the majority of their life. You're going to get the experience that you want and you're going to get an experience that you may not know that you may not know that you want. These like you might come to Canada and be like, I want to see the CN Tower in Ontario. And you'll okay, that's something normal. Everyone wants to see that. It's a very big tourist destination. But when you stay with a host family, you might get to see things that you don't know about, or you'll get to go to places that are places that only local Canadians would know about, and then you will get to a better, more authentic experience. The host family stay is also most affordable. Um, you're not staying in this like hotel, you're staying in an actual home, and therefore the costs are offset because you are staying in someone's home and they have a room for you. And we'll get on, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but it'll provide you a more comfortable stay and ability to practice your English more. Um, some host families, you'll have a host brother or a host sister that may be around your age, might be younger, might be older, but you'll be able to talk English because you won't be with other students that are speaking your native tongue and you'll be able to practice um, your English more and they'll be able to help you develop kind of the skills that you want to develop while you're here. So you'll get a very personable, personable experience. Um, which segues into my next fact, um, which is going to be about our Red Leaf programs here. So I was talking about host family stays, but now we're going to switch over into what programs that we offer in Red Leaf. And then we'll get to talk a little bit more about the homestay once again a little bit later. So our academic year program is personally my favorite program. Um, I don't know why it's my favorite program. It just is. It's fun. The students are always a fun time. And as it's mentioned in the title, the academic year program is for students who want to come for a year or we do break it down into semester. So students will come, like I mentioned, for one or two semesters. We are a semestered system. So it's five months at a time. So you can either stay for five or 10 months. Um, these program dates are a little more set than some of the other programs that we'll talk about later. So that you either start in late August, early September, depending on the school year, 
or you start in January, early February, if you're only coming for one semester, and all of them end in June. So this is also for ages 11 to 18. So we do offer it for grades 7 to 12. There are schools called middle schools here in Canada where they do go lower from grade 9 in that four-year um, that four year high school experience we were talking about. They do branch out to grade 7 um, in, some, in some certain schools. So if you do have somebody that's in grade 7 or in grade 8, um, you can definitely reach out and we can make something work. There is specific school boards that do that 100%. So yeah, that's a little bit more about what the academic year program looks like. Um, and naturally, you're probably thinking what's included. And don't worry, I'll go over all of it. Um, it looks like a lot right there. It is a lot because a lot is included in it. But it, I will make it make sense to you if it does look a little stressful. So our first thing is an attendance at an exceptional Canadian elementary or high school. We can put middle school in there as well, but it is included. Um, like mentioned before, all-inclusive host family accommodation. And when I say all-inclusive, I mean all-inclusive. Sounds like a vacation. Um, basically, you'll get all-inclusive three meals a day. You'll get your own bedroom. You'll get a bathroom, whether that be a, a shared with a uh, host sister or host brother. You'll get a bathroom. You'll get um, all of our host families have like backyards and everything is all-inclusive. Um, You'll get your validation of credits. So anytime when you attend that elementary or high school, you will get validation that you actually were here, you studied, you passed, and you'll get a um, validated diploma or transcript, whatever the school calls for. You'll also get a Red Leaf custodianship for your visa, if you need a visa to come in here um, into the country. You'll get local coordinator support, and I'll touch on this in, in a couple slides, but each of our cities, we work with dozens of cities, okay? So in our cities, we have access to hundreds of schools. So we're not just one school. We have like dozens of school boards that we work with here at Red Leaf. And so within those dozens of schools, school boards, there is dozens of schools. So we have access to this plethora of different schools. So there's no way that we won't find a high school that's absolutely perfect for you. And based on what you like, what school goals you have, and what you kind of just want to see. Um, but anyways, in each of those cities, we have a local coordinator, somebody who lives there, who has lived there forever, and who will be in constant communication with you about your grades, about your activities, about your experience as a whole with your family, with just how you're doing, checking in on you, making sure you're okay. Um, and they will send me, myself in our office, three detailed reports to send to your, your natural families to make sure that they are, you are feeling okay, you're doing okay, any goals you want to reach on, like while you're here, any teams you want to make, it'll all be included in that. And you'll be able to kind of get a grasp of just the full experience. What is also included is a school uniform if required, like I mentioned. Public schools, you won't have to wear one, um, and but Catholic and potentially private, you will have to wear one, and that's included as well in our price. And a fun fact about Red Leaf is that we do have our very own 24-hour, um, it says emergency there, but it is just support. Like, students are, like, encouraged to call it at any time if they have any problems and they don't know who to talk to. We do have an emergency phone 24 hours, seven days a week, and somebody on our team will have it. And funny enough, I actually do have it right now. This is my regular phone. If you can see it, I don't know. I can't see myself. And then this is our emergency phone. And so if it rings, don't I get it's an emergency. But just kidding, all of my students that are here right now have no issues and that phone does not ring as much as, I mean, I don't think you'd want it to ring. So it doesn't ring very much, but that is a good sign. Um, our next program is our high school experience program. Um, this one is fun and as well. It's just depending on what you are looking for for your experience, I guess. So. A little bit of details about our high school experience program. 
the duration is four to 16 weeks. So if you do that in months, if that's easier for you, which it's easier for me, that's one to four months. Um, basically anywhere under a semester. And these program dates can be more flexible because you're only coming for a month or two months or whatever. You're able to kind of pick when it works for yourself. So anywhere from September to the end of May, you're able to pick in your week slots. We just don't ask, like we ask that you don't come around the um, end of May to June time because our students are in exams and I'll, it'll make more sense as to why um, in a second. But this is also offered for 11 to 18, which is grade seven to 12 as well. Um, basically what's included in this, you'll see that there is some differences but they're all basically the same. You'll still get your attendance at the high school, of course, and no doubt about it, you will get the all-inclusive host family accommodations, three meals a day, everything all-inclusive. The custodianship will still come your way. That local coordinator will still reach out and check in. We'll also give like mad support and awesome support. You will still get that uniform and you will still be able to call the emergency support number. However, the only thing that's not included because you are not coming for long enough to go over an exam period, you won't get validation for your credits and you won't earn credits in this experience because it, it truly is just an experience for you to come to Canada, to integrate into the high school, to integrate into the family. You're able to kind of just get that experience short term. And then maybe in the future, who knows, you come back for a year. We have students right now that um, came in a couple like a year or so ago and they came for a couple months and now they're coming they're here this year they're coming again next year and they'll get validation for all of their credits but you never know they like they loved it so much that they wanted to come back so that is the only thing that's not included with um high school experience just because of the time frame you're coming in what th that's also why you can't you're not allowed or able to not allowed you could but it doesn't make much sense. You won't get the best experience if you come for the exam time because you don't have to take the exams, which is awesome. So um, I'm gonna talk about now a few benefits to our specific programs for Redleaf. Um, I find these super cool and I've probably mentioned a few of them. So forgive me if I repeat myself, but I just want you guys to see just how beneficial it is to A, come to Canada, be here and come with Redleaf and come through and see all of our faces. So I have mentioned it is extremely customizable. We do have access to dozens of school boards and therefore hundreds of schools. So if you want to take the IB program, which is international, back, I can never say baccalaureate program, um, you're able to, we're able to find a school that does that, but also puts you on a basketball team. So we're able to customize it to your specific needs and um, we have our own platform of families that we work with. Our families are all extremely background checked. It's all very customizable to you. In hand in hand with customizable is personal touch. Um, we base our pl placements on the individuals and place them with the best families that we have for them, as mentioned. And which falls into my next fact of airport pickup, they will be majority of the time the people who pick you up from the airport so from the time that you land in canada and even before with your agent and communicating a red leaf staff will be in contact to make sure that your stay is easy as possible another cool thing about our red leaf programs is that let's say i don't know somebody in your host family gets sick the day and the time that they have to pick you up that's not a problem because one of us, like me specifically personally, or one of our team members will drive, pick you up at the airport and take you to your house. There's not a doubt in my mind. We are such a big family here and we will like, it's so customizable and very much we will be there for you. Um, which also falls in waterfalls over into my next fact. Um, if you are worried about the language barrier here with Redleaf, we do have our Turkish staff member on our team. Um, so there is no language barrier. Um, if you are having trouble speaking with your host family, you just give us a call and we have that Turkish team member that would gladly be able to help you out. Her name is Celine. If you saw her speak yesterday, she's great and she will 
treat you like she like you are her child. So she's a great, great asset to our team and also a great asset to you um, because she speaks Turkish and that is super awesome. And I should learn from her, maybe. And as I've also mentioned before, I we also do have that 24 hour phone number that is always on, always charged and always ready to help. But, um, oh, that's not a very nice screen. So let's get on into it. As I mentioned here, it's extremely customizable. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the documents that you might, you will receive through your agent, but also from, from Redleaf specifically. So our first, I'm gonna go through two documents with you. The first one is your host family profile. I'm gonna break that down for you. I'm gonna show you what you're gonna get when you go through Redleaf. <clears throat> So this is the family profile that you will receive. This is exactly the document. This is it. So you'll get a little message from Redleaf and it'll have your name here. If you can see my, um, my mouse, it'll have the program that you're in and it'll have pictures of your host mom and dad or your host mom, your host family. It'll have that, it'll say what they do, their phone numbers, how to contact them. And then below, it'll have their social media, so you're able to contact them that way. Um, it will mention which is the easiest way, which is nice, so you don't have to kind of guess being like, I wonder if they'll message me on Facebook, or I wonder if they'll WhatsApp me better. It'll tell you if they like email, if they like Facebook, whatever they like, it'll tell you. Um, you'll also be able to kind of look, you'll look, be able to look up the exact address of your, of your host house host house um that way you can see i don't know if there's a cute little coffee shop or a cute place to get like a mall um near you so you can look up the address and you could go on street view i know i like to do that go on street view and see kind of how it looks before i come or before i go um so that's a really cool thing about it as well i've mentioned our local coordinators in our cities it'll tell you a little bit more about that person depending on where you are um, and therefore you'll be able to email them they're going to kind of be your first um, communication if you have anything to talk about or other than your host family like if you have any issues whether that be with school you'll reach out to your local coordinator and they'll be able to answer all of your questions and if not then they'll come to myself so it'll tell you a little bit more about them and their experience as well so you know that they're not just some random person so that's really cool um then on the second page this is kind of where it gets into airbnb ish vibes um it'll tell you the family members like i mentioned if you have a host sister or a host brother or a host brother dog it'll tell you where and what they look like they'll include some pictures of them hanging out um and things that they like to do whether they like to go on nature walks they, this family seems to like to go spend a lot of time in the community they like to spend time at the farmers markets and local festivals um and they like to go skating, which I assume they mean ice skating. So that's something that maybe some of you guys haven't done, um, which is super fun. I've been skating all all winter because we've it's been keeping me busy. Basically, you'll get to see what they like and what they enjoy. If they have any dietary restrictions, that's also a thing that we can, we are able to accommodate for any medical or uh, dietary restrictions just tell your agent and we can tr do our very best to work around it and work through it because we do have such a big, like a big amount of options for host families. There is going to be a family that works with your specific restriction or exceptionality or whatever, whatever it is. We have those families in our system for that reason, for you to come. So then when we choose a, a perfect host family for yourself, We'll have them write a letter to you so they're like they address you and they want they tell you a little bit more about kind of what what they like to do in their own personal words because this it gets a little bit just more personal um on the third page you'll get to actually see photos of the inside of the house which is really cool to me and you can go through and you can kind of see what's available obviously you'll have heating obviously you'll have air conditioning but if you have let's say a family computer in the living room. They'll mention that, it'll have a little icon there, um, Wi-Fi, 
and then it breaks it down room by room as to what's available and where you'll be actually living. So exactly like Airbnb, as I mentioned, is there. And on the fourth and final page, you'll get um, reviews from other students and they get to rank them out of 10, which is super cool. You'll see what nationality they were um, and just how many students who have like stayed there before and what they said, what they like to do. And then also over here, what program they were in. So we do offer um, different programs here for English and Homestay. And I think in a, two hours or maybe close to an hour now, my other coworker, Nathan, will be talking about our summer program. So go check that out for sure. Um, I'm flying through. Our next document is going to be your school profile. So you've gotten your family profile. And now where are you going to go to school? Redleaf will send you this document, which outlines basically everything about the actual school, specifically you're attending. This is in the Halton Catholic School Board. So this is what a Catholic school board profile would look like. It has the school board that you're staying in, um, the name of the school here and which city it's in. Then it'll have like a, nor a little, a little picture of the outside of it so you can kind of see it's kind of like street view and then down here it has some highlights so it'll go over basically if there's any specific programs that are really important to that school such as i'm pretty sure this assumption <clears throat> assumption offers uh different advanced placement levels and different courses so basically we highlight any of the highlights it says it in the name in the second paragraph, it'll go over clubs and sports teams. Here at Red Leaf, I feel like that is probably our most, like, that's something that's so important to me. We want you to have a good time when you're here. We want you to enjoy yourself. We want you to look back on the experience you had in Canada and be like, wow, that was so much fun because it is such a fun place to live in and it's such a fun place to be in. So we want you to join extracurriculars. We want you to join the sports teams, join the drama club, I don't know, attend the different extracurriculars that are here. So it'll go through literally everything. So this place has a hockey team, a swimming team, curling, golf, soccer, but also does like academic quiz teams. And they do like mock trials if you're interested in law, if you're interested in st other stuff like that. Um, and then on here on the side, it'll tell you just like more factual information. So like if you want to know when it was founded or how many students it has um, and if they offer like ESL, like English as a second language support, it, that'll all be checked off here. This is a really good school. Just a fun fact. <laughs> um, so and then I'll have the address. So if you did want to do your own research, you can look that up as well. Um, and on the second page of this document, we'll break it down the school board specifically, um, how many students they have in their school board. Um, where the school board um, encompasses how a lot of the times the question is how close is it to Toronto and so a lot of our school profiles will have a map showing the distance between Toronto um, and the said school board so basically then it'll break it down into the community so it's this far away from Toronto in this case I feel like it's like an hour and a bit away from Toronto um but it'll break it down the city. So if you're one of those people who do like to get involved um, in the community, you can see what the community itself looks like. And you can see if it is a countryside, an urban or a rural or a suburban um, area that you'll be living in. Burlington itself specifically does have a beautiful um, lakefront and lots of good hiking and walking opportunities for the weather when it's nice out, but also when it's snowing out. There's something about a winter walk that just is, it's so good. Um, another point to mention that I love on these sheets is down here, it says the average temperature. So speaking of that, you can kind of see the variance of how different the weather is, um, which is super cool. So yeah. Um, I think that's everything. I probably went through very fast. So if you guys have any questions, um, A, you can pop by our booth at this this booth, Red Leaf Academic Programs, or you can take note of the email address down there, send me an email. Um, I think I should be able to get off of this slide and go back and see if there's any questions. I'm going to try to do that after I go to the next slide. But if you have any other inquiries about the application process or anything after this fair or anything, just reach out to your Endless Abroad agent. 
but um, and also swing by our booth now. So I'm going to try and stop sharing. Um, I don't know how to stop sharing. Oh, stop sharing. So I think you won't be able to see me now. Um, okay. So question one, I think this is good. Um, I want detailed information to be in high school in Poland, America. I can definitely send you information. If you pop by our booth, we can definitely get you a specific information about what you're interested in. Um, do we have scholarships? Our answer to that is that because we work with not just private school boards, our prices are already the exact same as if you would get a scholarship for a private um, for a private school as well. So our pri our prices are already um, at the level that they should be. I think I'm seeing them. I don't know if I want to. Okay, yes, perfect. Um, I think that's all of our questions right now that I have. But thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry if I was a little fast. Um, sorry if I stuttered and you didn't understand. But if you didn't understand and want clarification, just swing by the academic booth um, now. And